coding interviews are hard, so much so that there's nerds out there solving hundreds of leak code problems just to get ahead. But is that really necessary? Do we really live in a world where you need to solve cherry pick up a three dimensional dynamic programming problem just to get a job? I don't think so. Yes, technically anything can come up in an interview, but I think there's a smarter way to prepare. Why not prioritize the concepts that are easiest to learn, but also are most likely to come up in interviews? Well, because most people don't know what those are, but with my background, I think I do. Arrays are the first data structure that we all learn about, and that's because they're simple, but there's surprisingly a lot of non-trivial algorithms relevant to arrays. I'm not just talking about binary search and sorting, but also two pointers, the sliding window, and if we want to get fancy, we can even do some pre-processing by computing the prefix sums of an array to solve certain problems more efficiently. And the good thing is, most of these algorithms are actually not very complicated once you understand them. But if I were you, I wouldn't just understand them. I would get so good at them that solving a simple binary search or a sliding window problem feels as easy as writing a for loop even if that means you have to go back and resolve the same easy problem multiple times. A lot of people will struggle with more difficult problems and that's because they don't have a really, really good grasp of the basics. And actually arrays are so all encompassing that many other patterns can also be applied to them like stacks, greedy algorithms, and of course everyone's favorite, dynamic programming. Another broad concept is recursive decision trees. You might be thinking, doesn't the specific pattern actually matter? Like recursion can be applied to trees. It can be applied to backtracking. Well, yes, no one is born knowing those concepts. You'll have to learn them. But if you have a very strong fundamental understanding of decision trees, you can solve a wide variety of problems from binary trees, backtracking problems, combinatorics, dynamic programming, and sometimes even graph problems. If you've gone through the Neat Code 150 list or roadmap and watched my videos, you've probably got tired of me talking about decision trees. Decision tree, decision tree, decision tree. So we have, four. but that's because they are such an easy way for us humans to understand the intuition of complex algorithms. Graphs are a massive topic. It's literally a sub-branch of mathematics. That's why some of the craziest problems you might have seen are graph problems. But at the heart of graph problems are two relatively simple algorithms, DFS and BFS. You probably first learned about these algorithms with binary trees because trees are just a special type of graph. But I really can't overstate how important these two algorithms are. You should definitely be able to apply these two on both matrix graphs as well as adjacency lists. Because even though you may be implementing the same algorithm, depending on the structure of the graph, the code can be quite different. But again, don't just get surface level knowledge. I would recommend you to really understand them. Like you should be able to tell me what would go wrong if I removed any of these lines of code. Without this, we might get an index out of bounds error. Without this one, we might get stuck in an infinite loop. Without this one, we might overcount the solution. I know some people will say, who cares? This sucks. It's not relevant to my job anyway. And that's a fair point but I don't think it's bad to be able to deeply understand a pretty fundamental algorithm like depth first search. The forbidden jutsu of the algorithms world is definitely the hash map. Whether you're using it to count the occurrences of characters in a string or using it to build an adjacency list for graph problems, it's almost certainly going to be useful in your interviews. There's not much to talk about because thankfully hash maps are pretty easy to use, but if you're struggling to optimize your solution, the first question you should ask yourself is, would a hash map be helpful here? 
Heaps are also pretty simple. They have a sorted property either as a minimum heap or a maximum heap. They support log end time insertions, log end time removals of either the minimum or the maximum element, constant lookup time, and lastly, heapify can transform a set of values into a heap in O of n time. That's relevant because it's more efficient than inserting elements one by one if you're given all the elements up front. We can't end this video without talking about dynamic programming. We all know that it's difficult to learn, but it's not as common as people think it is. I would definitely prioritize it after all of the other concepts I've talked about in this video, but if you are gonna learn it, I would mainly focus on the most common and famous dynamic programming problems, like the longest common subsequence problem, the coin change problem, and several others that are included in the Neat Code 150 list. Yeah, it's theoretically possible you'll get asked a question like cherry pick up two. Yeah, cherry pick up two, because the first one wasn't hard enough. But let's be honest, even if you've literally solved this problem before, there's still a high chance you won't be able to solve this in a real interview. But that's all I really wanted to talk about. I see a lot of people nowadays solving hundreds and hundreds of problems, and there's nothing wrong with that, but if your goal is just to prepare for interviews and maximize your chances with the least amount of effort possible, like doing a reasonable amount of preparation, I would highly recommend focusing on the most important concepts that I talked about.